display your Rue Peter badges and stop dreaming of Anastasia Beverly Hills because fans of a RuPaul's Drag Race UK are dreaming of another prize, a spot at Eurovision 2020. Should we talk about it? <laughs> Let's do this! William Kyling from Wee Wee Vlogs, and if you are a fan of Eurovision and RuPaul's Drag Race UK, then you are in luck because our worlds have collided on social media in recent days. That's after the fierce threesome of Blue Hydrangea, Davina De Campo, and Bag of Chips teamed up to slay a girl group competition on the show, and now some fans are calling for them to sing for the BBC in Rotterdam. Rotterdam, you get fake ass. They had some proper girl group choreography. I am talking Sayonara Saturdays, Atomic Kitten, Kaboom, putting girls aloud on mute. This was professional. And also the track was incredibly catchy. It had that rhythm. It had that flow. It made you want to get up and go. Okay, but winning an auto-tune lip-sync on RuPaul's Drag Race doesn't say very much. Okay, girl, I hear you, but the Frock Destroyers have actually proved that they have a bit of mainstream appeal. As of midday on Sunday, their song had reached number three on the iTunes UK charts. They went past Selena Gomez. They went past Ariana Grande. They were only behind, I believe, the Tones and I and Zua Lipa. You've got to remember that drag has gone mainstream partly because of RuPaul's Drag Race, and the fact that a song from the show can chart on iTunes here says a lot. You can read all about it on weeweeblogs.com. Now, as a result of the song's positive reception and it charting on iTunes, a Eurovision and RuPaul's Drag Race UK fan has actually started a petition online calling for this trio to sing at Eurovision. This is what he wrote. The UK has long suffered dreadful entries that are not a true representation of our country, providing dreadful results. Recently, we have seen one of the best things to happen to UK TV and pop music, RuPaul's Drag Race very own Frock Destroyers smashing it with their song Break Up Bye Bye, currently in the top three of the UK charts. Now we've got to ask ourselves, is this actually an option? As you Eurovision fans know, this year the BBC has partnered with BMG, and BMG is apparently advising them on songwriters, songwriting, how to choose their act, and people are assuming this means there will be no BBC Eurovision You Decide national selection, aka a closed door internal selection. Now, none of these drag queens are signed with BMG, but BBC Studios is still choosing, ultimately, who goes to Eurovision. So you could partner a drag queen from BBC Studios with a songwriter from BMG. Now, of course, there has been a lot of mixed reaction online. We're going to start with the positive. We're going to find the light. On the Weeby Blogs Instagram, Harry writes... Bag of chips is stunning. Bag of chips is class. <laughs> Police and frog destroyers. We defo won't come last. He has changed the lyrics. If you know the original, you will know they are not safe for work. And on our Twitter, Tom says, OMG, I listened to this this morning. Yes, totally up for them at Eurovish. Of course, this bag of chips is definitely mixed, and there is some salt and vinegar in the mix. Gastro gays say, just because it all works on Drag Race does not mean it'll work at Eurovision. Hand on face emoji. You know, that's a very fair point. There is plenty of precedent for acts and artists who work outside of Eurovision to fail when it comes to Eurovision. Ultimately, this does come down to song choice. Look at Engelbert Humperdinck, Bonnie Tyler, mega legends outside of Eurovision, but they didn't really work for the audience, and their songs didn't really fit the competition. You can look at No Angels in Germany. It was an absolute disaster. Dita Von Tees, again, she kind of peppered the German Eurovision performance in 2009, but it did not add enough spice to please viewers. Again, I would go back to the BMG element. You could respond to this by saying it is about the song, so if BMG is on board, they could equip the ladies with a song in which they would slay. Writing on the Wee Blogs website, Jack is not a fan either. This is what he had to say. Nothing against drag queens who I usually find entertaining, but honestly, no. 
I wonder how many actual dedicated British Eurovision fans signed this petition but have pleaded for years at the BBC to take the contest seriously. They're just digging a deeper hole. I am certain BMG will not stoop this low and hopefully select a decent quality contemporary song for UK at Rotterdam 2020 to finally get the country back in their old school successful ways and banish the kitsch image of Eurovision being an LGBT inclusive event. Look, and I just said there is nothing wrong with being an LGBT inclusive event, and there is nothing wrong with a kitsch image. But I do accept the point that sometimes drag acts like DQ did not have the crossover appeal as other artists. Peter writes, William, stop! If you want to kill off Eurovision, go ahead with all these drags. If you want to keep ESC alive, keep it mainstream and leave your personal interests personal. Look, I'm not even going to respond to that. I'm going to let Jonas, another writer slash reader on Ruby Blogs, reply. He says he's reporting on a petition started by somebody else. Fact. That's all. He's not necessarily endorsing the idea himself. He's not all powerful. Amen. Also, if he kept his personal interests personal, the site wouldn't exist. Thank you for that reasonable response. Also, I think I am going to respond. If the original commenter, Peter, thinks that three drag queens can ruin Eurovision, then he doesn't seem to have that much faith in the contest. I point out that it has survived and indeed thrived with many drag queens, chief among them Conchita Verst, who brought the contest to millions of people. She's like an icon to millions of people who weren't even into Eurovision before she competed. I'm just gonna leave it there. Oh, DQ, Denmark, the Slovenian drag queens, there have been a lot of drag queens and the song contest keeps going. Of course, there is a very legitimate concern, can they sing? And we've got to start by talking about Davina DeCampo. She auditioned for The Voice in 2016, absolutely blew the judges away. Okay, she didn't have anyone turn their chairs, but once they turned their chairs and saw that it was a male performing this stunning operatic number, their jaws were on the floor. A lot of people have watched that video. You watch it, you will sing that she can, in fact, sing. Now, the other two. They may not have the chops to be in Destiny's Child or to be in the Saturdays. However, I can confidently say they could make the rotating lineup of the Sugar Babes. They are performers. You don't have to be the best singer to do well at Eurovision. You have to have proper backing vocalists and a good, decent song. Let Davino carry this vocally and they can be in the background. Well, vocally that is, because as performers they can come to the fore. It's called the Eurovision Sign Contest, not the Eurovision Voice Contest, and there are plenty of examples, I will not name names, of acts that have done very well despite not having the strongest lead vocalist. And we should also point out that Eurovision and Drag Race have some existing connections. One, Michelle Visage, the iconic judge. She, of course, did the Eurovision commentary for the United States for two years, I think, on Logo. Absolute slayage. She even told us how much she loved Eurovision. Michelle Visage. Yes, me. Eurovision commentator America. Yes. What do you love about the show? Uh, it's ridiculous. The campness, but also how seriously they take it. Mm. It's like life or death for people. And then, of course, you have the one, the only, Courtney Act. She was fighting for love down in Australia. And more specifically, she was fighting for a chance to sing at Eurovision for Australia in their national final. She came fourth, I believe, very respectable. In the past, the BBC has been criticized for lackluster staging, and if we know anything, it's that the team at World of Wonder and its RuPaul Drag Race stars know how to turn a look. That includes the staging. They can work the runway. Let's just look at Bru Bru <laughs> Blue Hydrangea recently. This is iconic, as she wrote on Instagram. And look at Davina DeCampo. This is futuristic chic. She deserved to win that challenge. In any case, that's the tea that we're sipping. What about you? What are you hearing and what are you thinking? Do you think this trio could slay at Eurovision? Do you think the drag thing is a bit passe at the song contest? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. And don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram, I'm Willie Lee Adams, and on Twitter, that's at Willie Lee Adams. And of course, Weebly Blogs is on all of these platforms at Weebly Blogs. Be sure to hit subscribe, keep watching the drag race, keep watching ESC, and we will see you later. Bye!